Welcome to Design Diary, the podcast where you get to look inside my board game design notebook as well as what's going on inside my head. We look at a new word each day from the sense of mechanics, tone, theme, or inspiration for a full game. Today's word is... Tomfoolery. Playful or foolish behavior. And I, I experienced this at my game nights and kind of went with something on something that I've experienced. Um, should I just Wait, go so into it? What, yeah, well, so tomfoolery about your game nights. It's just that I always have to read the rules, like especially when we're playing something new or that we haven't played in a while. And all mm-hmm. everyone else does is just mess around and like <laughs> they'll start like flicking the components and like just like whatever you could do to not listen to me read the rules and not allow mm-hmm. me to actually understand the rules. And it's like it's a hundred percent of the time. They're just <laughs> a bunch of animals in my house. There's always my brother, <laughs> my brother in law, my children, and like they just will never let me do it. And like if it's something like especially anything like dexterity or anything like that. Like I'm showing them how you're supposed to stack something and they're flinging things at me. So yes. I, I was thinking about that whole tomfoolery at the game table. Um, okay. And I said, trying to read and teach the rules to others and everyone's just messing with me and preventing it. It makes me think of something that has a goal, uh, likely dexterity where everybody just messes with the active player. And I thought of, um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought of like a, there's two things. It was like a time-based, like, dumping of bits. Like, so there's all kinds of bits that are dumped on the, on the board. The board is like, let's say, like a map or something. And your goal, one player, is to, to like, uh, it'll, it'll come out. With the bits comes out, like, your goal card. And the goal is like, you know, have have three characters in each area with a star and avoid airplanes and do this and that. So it's like a imagine this big war. And the war mm-hmm. is dumped on the table, and your goal is to set that up before a timer runs out or whatever. But everybody else, <laughs> this is where it gets r- ridiculous. They just have paper and they're making paper airplanes and just throwing them at it. So when it says <laughs> avoid airplanes, it's like People are making paper airplanes and, and paper structures and launching them onto this table trying to take out the bits as you're supposed to be setting them up. All right. So, so that is that is literally – so the paper airplane – the paper doesn't come with the game. It literally is an outside component it, it that literally you bring said, in. Yeah. So basically <laughs> to get this down to what I wanted to see was a game where um, – Definitely like a war game where paper airplanes are a factor in it and everybody makes one <laughs> and they, they make one and they use that as their, as their, uh, you know, their attacking item. But, yeah, you're right. It, it is silly. <laughs> but there was, what I, I know, and Tom Fullery just makes me think of dexterity for some reason, but it made me really think of, um, I've been to, have you ever been to, I guess you haven't, but Toy Fair or anything like Toy Fair? No, I haven't. So Toy Fair is a convention in New York City, and it's trade only. So nothing is actually for sale there unless you're like a store ordering like product for next year or for six mm-hmm. months or now or pre-orders and things like that. Nobody's ever leaving with anything. So you go right. to Toy Fair and you see all of this year's toys. It's like February. You see everything for the course of the year. They've had a really cool board game presence, and you could even pitch meetings to publishers there now. But I used to go um, just because I buy a lot of toys. Um, and, you know, it just happened to be through a board game store was the way I got in because it's trade only. <laughs> but uh, I remember walking around and there was one aisle where it was all like the yo-yos and those like anything that you like throw or launch and it comes back to you or anything like that. And I'm walking down the aisle and on either side of the aisle, these people are flinging things over your head and like... I'm like ducking and trying to get down this aisle while they're like having the time of their lives, like throwing these silly toys that bounce and come back. And I, it's like, you you feel like you're just like under attack walking down the aisle. And it's one of the Mm -hmm. most vivid memories of toy fair for me. It's just this aisle of silly, like things that get thrown. (laughs) uh, That was interesting. That was sort of, I drew that in my notebook for, for Tom Fullery. (laughs) Nice. Well, I knew for a fact that I was going to go dexterity, so I actually limited myself to no dexterity as a 
crazy, crazy shocker. Wow. Um, so I was thinking about uh, things that make me laugh in games, and specifically what actions in games are funny. And uh, I remember uh, Jeff Engelstein has a game tech segment where he talks about how die rolls are more dramatic than card flips because the die roll is uncertain. Yes. Is uncertain from the moment the die leaves your hand to when it almost stops. But a card flip is almost destiny waiting to catch you. And so I think that flipping cards is a lot funnier than dice rolling. Because of that kind of destiny that all comes together to make sure that you lose or something really bad happens to you. And so I wanted to see if I could make a game just basically off flipping cards. But um, it actually didn't turn out to be <laughs> funny or silly, but it, <laughs> it is weird. So um, I wanted to have a face-up deck of cards. And on your turn, you simply cut the deck a number of times and split it into a number of piles. Okay. So that it shows a number of things on top of these decks. And so depending on how many cards match from those piles, you get certain things. But in those piles are bad things that show up, or if they're revealed when you take matching icons. So let's say they're all different fruits. You cut it, and there's two lemons showing. That's the only pair. If you take those lemons, and it reveals something else, whoever has like the most lemons, or the least lemons, or something else, something really bad happens to them. So I just thought it was, it was, it was an interesting kind of visual that I wanted where this deck, this giant deck just gets split over and over and over again that gets smaller and smaller, but just more and more piles as the game spreads out. That's interesting. Um, and then it's, it's always funny uh, to have one loser. So <laughs> in, uh, in, in you fool or uh, cockroach poker, there's one loser that everyone can laugh at. And that is, Always hilarious. That is always So it, it is definitely going to be one of those win conditions. But I didn't have much beyond that. It wasn't that silly, but it's, it wasn't dexterity, which I was actually <laughs> proud of myself for doing. It's one of those, those topics that, to me, is so difficult because it's behavior. Like, behavior yes. is, is, is as a result of the game. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. hard for that to be the game. And if that is the game, it's usually some kind of storytelling or something where... You know, you're acting out. It's really exactly. hard. That's just such a hard, hard thing for me to hit and um, and force. Like, I don't want to force behavior. I want to see it emerge. Yeah. It's so it's so rare to like pick up a game and laugh because of a single component or anything unrelated to what other players do or what you do you do yourself. Because humans are funny. Games, meh, yeah, only funny because are funny i i wrote down some notes about um which i'm sure is done and it's like it's kind of that thing i do every time we play something like imagine you're playing like like cards against humanity or or joking has or something like that and the goal is to you know get the best card out of every uh, out of the best group of cards out of everybody that puts them into play but my favorite thing to do in those games is do the little side like I made this really cool thing in my hand and I show it to the person next to me. And it's just to mm -hmm. get that reaction that is not going to win me any points. In fact, it's going to potentially lose me points if I use those cards later, you know, right. against them. But it's just that get that smirk and reaction out of out of your name. The person that you know gets the joke, not just like the active player. So I was mm -hmm. thinking, like, is there a game out there that you know, it's like that where, you know, we're trying to predict response. So, you know, I, I put two cards together and they're either going to be ones that are really shocking or they're going to be ones that are really funny. And I'm trying to almost like predict what the active player is going to respond. I have no idea. I assume there's some party game that's like that. Um, oh, yeah. But most definitely. There has to be. <laughs> yeah. There's so many party games out there. It's nuts. <laughs> It's so bad. I mean, they, to me, they all look the same because they they don't stretch the graphic design or anything like that. Yes, they they definitely try to fit that party game mold. Oh yeah, lots of party games, and someday I will join them. Who knows? We'll see. 
<laughs> in playing or designing? <laughs> in designing. Nice. I don't know. I have, a, I have a bunch of board game kind of goals that I want to achieve. And there's kind of two different kinds of board game designers. There's one who kind of perfects an idea over and over. So it's the Uwe Rosenberg with polyominoes. Yes. Like he has six or seven different games that all have to do with different ways of polyamory. And I'm very jealous you, of that. Like, yeah, that, that to me is like, it's, it's like, uh, like, oh, it's, it's exceptional use of your resources to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Like that, that is great. Like perfect. Like I'm sure he's happy with each of the games, but he can kind of refine and, and make the next game even easier to make. Yeah. And so that's got to be that's got to be nice to be able to pump that out. But I think I'm more of a designer where I want to have a collection of different games to design. So there's a dexterity game, there's a real-time game, there's a cooperative game. So those all those ideas pop into my head not not necessarily the same game or type of game over and over and do you just want one of each like that's your collection <laughs> i mean i would i would hope that i would get to a point where i could retread or revisit some ideas and make them better but then i would also think like why don't i just do it right the first time but i mean that's a dumb way of, of thinking about it because you can always improve even if you've done it a million times so it is really know. like I have a lot of goals. Could imagine like the Rob Kramer library where it's like the Rob Kramer uh, pick up and deliver <laughs> game, the Rob, yes. Rob Kramer, you know, area control game. Exactly. And, yeah. So and, you could you could see that they have the same kind of spirit because there are design principles that I want to keep from game to game. Not a lot of text. I love spatial uh, elements in games. So there's there's principles that I apply to each game, but. I would want them to, yeah, if I had a collection of games and they were all games designed by me, I would want them, if that was all one person had, they would have a variety of games. That's funny. And then mine is I would want them all to be set in the same universe. That's my, like, I would love to, like, I want an IP. That's what I want. And I want the IP to be that, like. I don't want to, like, I made a comic book and it's about that. Like, I want my board game universe and they all exist in there. There you go. Well, those sound like great goals. They are. <laughs> all right. Well, next time we will uh, we will do better. <laughs> Sounds good to me. We'll all hit right. some of our goals. Yeah. All right. See you later. Talk to you later. later.